I looked like an Asian baby. <laughs> I looked like an Asian baby when I was born. We're all so Asian black. babies. And then we 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 uh, evolve or devolve into something else. White people, you're the devolvers. Everybody else, you evolve. You're your Charizard. Yes. White people, y'all are uh, y'all are whatever plankton is. I don't know. <laughs> Get it together, white people. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. There it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another phenomenal episode of My Mama Told Me, the podcast where we dive deep, deep into the pockets of Black conspiracy theories. And we finally work to prove that Wendy Williams' plastic surgery was not made from her own skin, but instead from the dead cheek meat of Louis Armstrong. That's right. That's not a BBL, ladies and gentlemen. That is an SBL, a Satchmo butt lift. And I am going to do everything I can <laughs> to prove that to be true. I, you know, sometimes I come up with these uh, these introductions and they are clever. And they are witty. This one feels like a weird reach. And I, I'm, I'm desperate, folks. I'm running out of black people to make fun of and, and accused of doing horrible things out in the world. But, you know, that's I think that's a symptom of doing this for as long as I've done it. And and I won't apologize, you pieces of shit. You'll get what you get. That's what I always say. You know who won't get what she gets? She gets better than what what she gets. I don't know what this means, but she's fantastic. It's my guest today. My goddamn guest today is lovely. She's wonderful. She is hilarious. She's all the all the affirmations that one would want to have and give to another person. She's great. And and you know her work. She has a brand new comedy special called Love Joy. It's on Peacock. You need to go watch that shit. So funny. And she has an album out called Yell Joy. And that's available everywhere, not just Peacock. So, you know, you ain't got to go searching as hard as you probably do when you go looking for shit on Peacock. Anyway, she's dope. <laughs> give it up for my guest, Miss Joyelle Johnson. Oh, my God. Goodness. I'm just so happy right now. I'm smiling cheek to cheek. Like you Hell are yeah. just the epitome of black boy joy. And <laughs> I'm loving watching you nerd out. This is so fantastic. Yes. This is the work that I do. This is this is why I leave my baby uh, to go <laughs> to go your ministry. <laughs> <laughs> to go accuse Wendy Williams of digging up a dead man's grave so that she could mm. change her body. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't put it past her. She's a Jersey girl. Uh, we can be quite ruthless at times. That's and, fair. hey, who cares if it's up for grabs? But let, let, before we get into the conspiracy theory, this is actually, I, I'm truly just curious. Where do you stand in the whole Wendy of it all? Are you a, are you a Wendy fan? Do you, do you subscribe to, to the Wendy verse? I am a Wendy Stan. Okay. Whoa. I grew up in New Jersey. And when she was on the radio in New Jersey, she was that chick. Like right. me and my mother used to listen to her in the car. My mother loved talk radio and I would beg for her to play music. So our our compromise was listening to Wendy Williams. So I mean, when the when the Whitney Houston interview came yeah. out, like all when all those things came out, we were listening to it in the car, like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and when she got her show, like that's me and my mom's thing. We'd watch it together. Oh man. Uh well, we feel very differently about Wendy <laughs> Williams in my household, but I, I respect that. She ain't from yeah. where I'm from. So, you know. Oh, I, and I totally get it. I mean, she is absolutely ridiculous. But just a I monster. Love <laughs> She's yes, absolute monster. I will I will claim that. And I love it. <laughs> I'm I'm like the people who love Kanye. That's I fair. get it. Okay. I get it. I can see that. That we mm -hmm. we all have a, a person we dig our heels in for and we're like, nah, I don't I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, care yeah, what yeah. he did. We can go back on tour. Sure. <laughs> And that's how I feel about Jelaine Maxwell. I love her work. No, I'm joking. <laughs> this is a How to Get Canceled podcast. <laughs> I will say that that the Wendy interview that she did with Judge Mathis remains one of the funniest things that I've ever seen or heard oh when, of just 
him calling her a crackhead, her admitting to be a crackhead, but then also being like, but you're still a, a like cheating on your wife and like a bad guy. Like you're not. Dude. Yeah. That's why I love her so much because she's was 100 percent honest. Like, that's why I love George Carlin, because he's like, I did drugs. This is who I am. Yeah. That's why I never trusted Bill Cosby because he told someone not to curse. And I was like, you're telling other people not to curse. That was weird yeah. to me as a child. And how about also don't rape? Sure. But- <laughs> <laughs> it was the cousin that got you off board, though. <laughs> the cousin. <laughs> like, come on, man. So I love how honest she is. So, man. Jersey girls. All right. Well, I'm learning a lot today, Joyelle. But you know what? We, we yes. don't have time to talk Wendy all day because you came with yes. a conspiracy theory that's going to get a lot of bridges burned. It's going to oh upset goodness. a lot of folks out in the world. We've done we've done a, an episode or two about this this lady, but none is I'm not, I would argue none. No topics as provocative as the one that yes. you've chosen today. You said Ooh. my mama told me. Beyonce was never pregnant. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, when I saw that on the list of conspiracy theories, it absolutely jumped out to me because I was like, oh, that's something I truly believe. Oh. <laughs> that's something I truly believe. I I am not so certain that she delivered Blue Ivy. And here's the thing about it. Yeah. It's okay. Yes. It's okay because I know a lot of women who have had miscarriages. That's mm-hmm. what I think happened. I think she had a miscarriage and then maybe had a surrogate involved mm. and was able to deliver the baby because Black women, the statistics in this country of our pregnancy, terrible. Serena Williams almost died giving birth. It's like not easy for us. Yeah. So my evidence was that one interview she did where she sat down and her stomach <laughs> dented in. I said, girl, that is an absolute prosthetic because... Sure. The way she sat down, you know, you, you've met a pregnant woman recently. I met one. <laughs> you've met one. When they are that pregnant in the third trimester, they're not sitting down ass first like that. Frankly, my wife did stop sitting down at a certain point and would just uh, sort of fall backwards and hope that something <laughs> was there to catch her. You know what I mean? Like exactly. there, there wasn't a, a careful sitting as much as just a desperate wanting for comfort. A plop down. Yeah. And I have a, fa- a huge family. I People call me the baby whisperer. I'm amazing with babies. Okay, well, you I, can have mine. Keep going. I will <laughs> ship the baby over. And I know pregnant women. And pregnant women in the third trimester just don't go to sit down like that. Mm-hmm. And when the stomach caved in, I was like, hmm, that makes sense. And it's just a fun delicious conspiracy theory. It's just so fun and meaty. I, I like a good conspiracy theory. I, I hold a few. Okay. Well, well, first, let's just start by saying it's fun now until the hive comes for you. But that's, <laughs> that's hey, enjoy yourself. You have an hour and a half Listen. of freedom and then eventually uh, everything is going to be canceled for you. And that's, that, that's where you'll be at. And I'm just going to say this to the hive. I love your leader. I really do. We were born the same year, the same month, both Virgos. I love your leader. I think she's amazing. I think she did give birth to the twins. I think Mm. that she worked her ass through a pregnancy and did, you know, everything she's done. In that moment when she sat down in that interview, homegirl wasn't one pregnant. So you're you're saying a few things that I think are are really important here that that we we got to dig into. So number 1, mm-hmm. let's let's clarify for our listeners the interview you're referring to. She went on a a morning, no, it was an evening talk show, excuse me, Australia's Sunday Night is what yes. it was called and Beyoncé goes to do this interview while pregnant with in theory, Blue Ivy, allegedly pregnant, she sits down. And as she sits down, number one, what you're explaining is she sits down in a way that doesn't feel like a person who would be as pregnant as she appears to be. And then on top of that, in sitting down, her stomach seems to sort of avalanche into itself. It, it sort of <laughs> becomes concave, concave for a quick second. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Oh, boy. And then pops back out, uh, <laughs> you know, like a Coke bottle you squeeze too hard. And that then launched 
the conspiracy theory that we're talking to and spend, I think it's been years of people uh, continuously mm-hmm. accusing her of having falsified her pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's interesting because I feel like there's a lot of shame with the potential thought that I had of her having a surrogate. For some reason, that's shameful for women these days. Our right. friend Michelle Buteau was able to have mm-hmm. a surrogate and she's open about it because, you know, she's very, even Kim very sort of open, very articulate about her experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because women need to understand that. But it's kind of like, you know, I just I just I just wish she would be able to be honest about it. You know, that would be cool for me if Beyonce was just like, yo, this is what I did. The other part that I think is really interesting in sort of what you presented, because the phrasing of it as we presented it may not even be the correct phrasing that you believe, because at least in your argument, you believe she had a miscarriage. So she was pregnant. It just wasn't that she took that baby to full term is, I think, what you're arguing. Yes, I I believe this is in my educated guess hypothesis brain that she actually was pregnant (laughs) in that moment that that MTV Video Music Awards where she like rubbed her belly and she was all happy. I think in that moment she was pregnant and then maybe something bad Mm. happened and then she was able to have the baby through a surrogate. However, in that moment, in that video, I do not believe she was pregnant. And there's timelines. I mean, she works so hard. Damn. She works so hard. She works so hard. And to do that fully pregnant, yeah. I mean, Catherine Zeta-Jones, she taped Chicago while she was pregnant and then was fully pregnant at the Academy Awards that year. That's crazy to do. <laughs> pregnant women need to sit down. Right. Backwards. Yeah, that. and, and to your point, <laughs> Not the way you're sitting, Beyonce. Hey, hey, <laughs> learn your lesson. You sit different. Uh, <laughs> Girl, <laughs> you got to get into the character fully. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of sort of like tax that gets put on a pregnant woman's body just by by existing in the world is a fuck ton. Like they, you are exhausted just walking, just doing basic everyday things. And the fact that Beyonce continued to be Beyonce the entire time that she was allegedly pregnant means that she was putting triple to quadruple the amount of tax that the average woman is putting on her body. Now, maybe she's just that capable or maybe you did a little too much The baby was lost. And instead of just taking that L, you opted to find a different solution to said problem. And this is in no way shaming anyone. This is in no way saying anything is anyone's fault here. These are just things that happen in nature. You know, there's there's women that have done less, you know, and had miscarriages happen, things like that. So there's like no, no mockery here. I just do not believe in that video. <laughs> in, in that video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so when Beyonce is rubbing her belly at the VMAs, you're <laughs> bought in. You're like, hell yeah, Queen Bee's pregnant. We're we're doing this. And then it's the video that breaks you, or is there something in between? I can we're be sold there. Okay. And then do you become I, and this is this is where I think all of conspiracy theory gets fascinating. Do you then become like a a person on the street waving a a fucking flag telling people about this? Or are you just sort of like, yo, I'm going to keep this to myself. I'm going to mind my fucking business. But that ain't no goddamn baby inside that belly. Listen, I'm, I'm sometimes grassroots with my conspiracy theories, with my gossip. Sure. I love to have conversations with people. It's, it's a fun dinner conversation to have just bust out with, hey, we never landed on the moon. It's just fun to see how other people feel about uh-huh. it. <laughs> this is one of those where you're like, you know, it, you're in a room full of gays. Hey, guys, was Beyonce pregnant? And then the room just erupts <laughs> into gossip and chatty of things we can't sure. necessarily tweet. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to take this to the interwebs. You, you, you want to keep this in a in a dinner party setting. Yes, yes. I mean, it's bold enough to even put it out of the podcast. Hello, Beehive. You guys are amazing. I love how you rally around. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't come for me. But if you do, watch the special. 
And uh... <laughs> sure, if you're going to come for Joyelle, at least come for her in the comments on Peacock. I assume Peacock has some section that they allow you to say hateful things yes. there and put little bumblebees. Do that shit there. Don't do it on on miscellaneous places that don't benefit her streams. Exactly. Yes. Put a whole bunch of bees. Uh, bees are cool. Hell yeah. We fuck with bees. Uh, <laughs> so go ahead and put them underneath Lovejoy on Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> That's my advertising voice. Okay. I love it. So you aren't sold on Beyonce being pregnant. I guess my question, and this is where I've always sort of been fascinated with this conspiracy st theory story, all of it. Why? What mo What do you think the motivation is here? Like, what is the the ultimate goal on her end to keep this part of it private? Because to your point, she could have been groundbreaking in this situation. Mm -hmm. She could have been a, a leader and really like broken this whole thing open and said, I am the one who's going to start this whole surrogate game off in terms of like certainly celebrity culture and mod contemporary celebrity culture. I'm sure it's happened before this. Yeah. You know that that whole black woman Superman, superwoman thing that we have to be superheroes at all times with everything. Yeah. We can't cry. We can't show any vulnerability. So it's like if I am if I am this magnificent being, I should also be able to do the most feminine thing possible, which is having a baby, right? Right. You know, and I feel like society puts that shame on us. I mean, that's why I'm such an advocate for women's reproductive rights. I think we need to talk about it on all stages of the platform and like having a surrogacy, having IVF, needing help to get pregnant. Things like that are things we need to be able to discuss more because it happens to so many women. Right. So you're saying that that Beyonce in particular is because of the way that she's sort of been elevated socially there's no chance of her showing this level of sort of like weakness. honesty. Yeah. And weakness almost seems like an yeah. unfair word because to your point, yeah. it is so common that mm -hmm. it should just be the way that we, we talk about what this journey is that like, you know, even with my wife and I, it took us a year to be able to get pregnant. It's not, it's yeah. not always like an easy process and that's not a reflection of health or capability or care or love or any of those things. Yeah. It truly is just human bodies are weird and fucked up. And sometimes exactly. ours don't do the things we ask them to do. And so you're saying Beyonce yeah. just isn't in a position to be able to show that vulnerability, even though it is so much the human experience. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like if you're going to the extent of putting a prosthetic stomach on for an interview, that is an ability to be like, let's just not deal with it, which is another reason why I'm a huge advocate of therapy. Right. <laughs> let's everyone, we got to deal with our stuff. And it's tough to deal with stuff in the open. But when you're a public figure, you know, it is, you know, you do what you do, but everybody's not able. I mean, how old was she at that point? She was still in her like early thirties, right? Yeah. I mean, blue, blue Ivy's what, uh, 29 now. So she was in yeah. her early thirties. <laughs> <laughs> she in college, Blue these, Ivy. <laughs> yeah, Blue Ivy's, you know, Blue Ivy's out here uh, running a, a, fi a Fortune 500 company at this point. So Basically, she's at least she, 36. She could purchase both of us. I just feel like <laughs> right now we 40. So it's like, okay, a 40 yeah. year old person would be able to be more open about something like that versus a 30 year old, you know. Yeah. And I will say that that even more to that point. Beyonce has gone through uh, sort of a renaissance, if you will, in terms of her her openness and transparency as a human being that for years she was sort of a, a bit of a, a robot, a stilted human being who sort of went out and danced and sang, but we never really got a much of a, a look behind the curtain as to who this person is. And then through the years, she has slowly become more and more a person who's like at least willing to show a level of vulnerability as much as a person who was built that way can at least. 
Look, it looks exhausting to be Beyonce. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I don't care for it one bit. I'll be I'll be real. I would much rather be Rihanna. That bitch look like oh. she have fun. <laughs> oh my god. I was in a I was in a hallway while she was in a room smoking some weed and I was just wanting to be in her presence. She's cool as shit. Yeah. But she just yes. she does what she wants. She wears what she wants. They when they oh, ask yes. her questions, she gives the answer that popped in her head, not the one that like is six chess moves uh, ahead of wherever she but, might get in trouble. That's not the pageant answer. Yeah. She doesn't give the pageant answer. She's fucking ASAP Rocky. Her. We could all we'd all enjoy fucking ASAP Rocky. That's a beautiful man. It's it's all uh, it's all going well for her. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to fuck ASAP Rocky? Who wouldn't want to fuck ASAP Rocky except for those uh, <laughs> Swedish people that he fist fought? Name, name the episode that. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to fuck ASAP Rocky? <laughs> <laughs> this episode about Beyonce is called Who Wouldn't Want to Fuck ASAP Rocky? Fuck Rocky? <laughs> I love that. Let me ask you this question because I do think mm. that this is, we're, we're talking about this, this, uh, transparency, this vulnerability that Beyonce wasn't able to show back then. Do you think there's a world now where she could come forward and say, hey, y'all, remember back when I was pregnant and I wasn't? I wasn't. And I think it's it's better for us to now know uh, a different truth in this. Can Beyonce do that or does she have to just keep going with this this story that she's built? I believe Beyonce can do whatever she wants because she is one of those Negroes that has, <laughs> I said Negro, that has like <laughs> exalted herself. She's exalted and it's like she can honestly pretty much do no wrong at this point, which is a very pageant existence where it's like she always says the right thing. Her her publicity gets her ugly photos off the internet, Never like stuff it. like that. So if she was to be like, this is Beyonce being vulnerable. Go. I think she could completely, because she'd have a whole team construct the the press release and the interview with Oprah. Yeah. And, and when she's going to cry in the interview, like she'd have a whole team right. construct it. And they could freaking change the world with that shit. They would heal so many women, Man. I think. Wow. Damn. That's heavy because it it also would mean, I, and maybe you you feel this as an artist, I think there's something beautiful about that, right? That like she could mm -hmm. she could liberate in in a sense so many people from like this this uh sadness, this frustration with what mm -hmm. it means to lose a child or to not be mm -hmm. able to get pregnant, blah, 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 blah. But then there's the other hard part about it, which is once you become the face of some shit, you yeah. you are the face of some shit. And you right, can't right. then walk other decisions backwards or you have to explain every decision you make in relation to that thing that you decided you were going to be the face of? I think it depends on the person, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm I'm fine with, you know, I, I work in abortion rights. I'm fine with that being somebody thinking about me and thinking about abortion. I'm fine with that. But I feel like Beyonce's done so much mm -hmm. that she that would just be an aspect of you know whoa this crazy awesome thing Beyonce did, but also you know single ladies. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tough. It's it's hard to predict because I it makes me think right. about like uh, Jesse Williams, right? We loved mm -hmm. Jesse Williams for the the three years that Jesse Williams was married to a black lady and saying all the right things about black liberation and, and what we need to do as a community. He was, oh, he was our beautiful blue-eyed speaker of, of the black house. And then yes. this nigga had an affair or, and I don't even know if he had an affair. Frankly, I know for, I know for certain that he and his wife went through a, a tumultuous period, broke up. Yes. And then Jesse very quickly found himself in the arms of a white woman, but then also other women. But that was enough for the Internet to then decide that everything that this man had earned was yeah. was now exempt because he because he wasn't good to his black queen. And it's like, that's not how that should work. The nigga was still spitting <laughs> bars. He he just <laughs> got some side pussy. And that's that's neither here nor there. I mean, I'm from the female perspective, look, dude, you can't be talking all that shit 
<laughs> and then do some basic nigga shit. That's some basic bitch shit he did. Like you, you come in with in with this exaltation. You don't have to do all that. You can also be fallible and and know that hey, I'm saying all this tough shit, but also I am a fallible nigga. Because then when you come out with that level of fallibility, it's like, come on, man. But he's a blue, whack shit. He's a blue eyed angel. Do you know what I mean? Like, what was he supposed to do? Have a regular? You know what I mean? Just right. cheat with like some regular right. schmegular person? No, he's going to go. He's been with this woman all these years. He's going to go do some wild shit. So like, I, I get what you're saying, but it's like. This motherfucker's going the route that them them gorgeous little, you know, dots on his face allow him to go. Yeah, they are dots. They're beautiful, beautiful dots. And <laughs> I would look, I'm happy I've never really met him. So <laughs> he walked past me at a party once. I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah, you, that's all it is. You get it. As long as you get it, then we can, do get it. We can forget and it. And I don't envy it. I don't want to be in that level of like humongous stuff happening. And then when you make one mess up, everyone's against you. I like I want to be a sidekick. No, for sure. <laughs> I I've thought about this a lot and I I don't think given what I do, I'm ever interested in becoming the champion of anybody's version of social justice. And that's not mm. a lack of care. It's not a lack of want for empowering and bettering situations for for the people around me. But I still want to be funny. I still want to be problematic. I still want to be able to talk my shit. And the second that I go and stand on somebody's soapbox, I am no longer able to talk the same shit that I was talking before. And Papa can't have that. I I need, you know, Papa can't have that. Papa don't take no mess. I feel the same way about abortion because I can be a, st- a stand for abortion because abortion chicks be messy sometimes. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, you're not expecting unmessy sure. pro-abortion people. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. yes, I drink, bitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> I drink, bitch. I've read that on a sign outside of Planned Parenthood, you know? Basically, that's why we here. I love that. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with more Joy L. Johnson and more My Mama Told Me. And we are back. Can you lend a nigga a pencil? Yeah, <laughs> we're back here with more Joy L. Johnson, more my mama told me. We're still talking about Beyonce and the possibility that she was only uh, pregnant at a point and then not pregnant anymore with uh, young Blue Ivy and Blue Ivy, in fact, may be born of a surrogate. Do you yes. think Blue Ivy knows? Do you think that they've covered it up so much that they, they've even tricked Blue Ivy into keeping it, into to being unaware of this secret? Or is it like Blue Ivy knows, but they've trained her to shut the fuck up about it? I don't know what's going on in that house. Um, <laughs> it seems like they wouldn't, tell her but then the internet is exists and you know the kid has a phone but then i wouldn't even put it above them to have like a special phone and a person who controls what she sees on her phone like i they can they have all the money they can do yeah. whatever they want to do so i wouldn't be surprised yeah but Blue ivy wouldn't know if she was adopted if they didn't want her to know yeah that's and that's the that's that power that that being a billionaire has i guess is that like you know, most of us, we access the Internet, but the motherfuckers, they have control over uh, an, at least a corner of it. And I'm sure that corner is the corner that they got Blue Ivy sort of tapped into. Yes, they say on Beyonce's Internet. That's what people say. You didn't come on Beyonce's Internet. <laughs> <laughs> on Beyonce's Internet. Beyonce had that baby. <laughs> yes, she did. Yes, she Other did. Other parts of the Internet, it's up for grabs. But Beyonce's Internet, that baby came out of her body. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's jump into some of this research, because I do think yes. some of this, if nothing else, is going to help clarify some of the potential holes in the story that is Beyonce giving birth to Blue Ivy. So the rumors Ooh. of Blue Ivy or excuse me, of Beyonce not, in fact, being pregnant technically started August 28, 2011 at that wonderful 
performance at the VMAs where uh, Beyonce does a bunch of dances and, and sings a bunch of songs. And then right at the end, pops her jacket open, rubs her belly. And we all go, hey, hey, wait a minute. That's a that's a goddamn baby in there. And she smiled and uh, Jay-Z cheered and Kanye rubbed his back and they were still friends back then. So it was all a, a beautiful moment that none of us uh, could have predicted would ever go awry, you know? Remember when? <laughs> <laughs> it was They were best friends. Watch the throne was out. It was a beautiful time. Oh, such a great album. Great album. However, this happens in August. In September, she does an interview after where she claimed that she was due in February which technically at that point would have made her four months pregnant at the VMAs. But then yes. for the video shoot for Countdown, which was one of the songs on the album that she was releasing as a pregnant lady, she claimed that she was six months pregnant, which means, and that video shoot was basically shot uh, within the same month of the VMAs. And that would have made her five months pregnant on the VMA stage and ultimately would have actually turned into the correct math for Blue Ivy's January 7th due date, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. So okay. Beyonce went from being four months pregnant to six months pregnant in a single month by her own nice. explanation, which some claim this faulty math is reflective of her trying to create an illusion around mm. her pregnancy. Wow, I've never I've never even dug this deep. <laughs> oh. I, again, this is why I'm I leave my family. <laughs> <laughs> you better make it worthwhile. Yeah, you don't you don't leave your family to to dig with one of them plastic shovels. You got to get in with the metal joint and put your foot yeah, on it. You burying know what I mean? bodies over here. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> But I'd love to hear your thoughts in relation to this mischief around the months. Do you think that this at this point is something in, in fact mischievous or do you think this was just a an error of a woman who didn't graduate from high school? Whoa. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Jeez a petty Louise. bitch. Um, here we go. Let's turn all the way up. That's hilarious because there. OK, there are some pregnant women who are not on top of their days. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> I know most pregnant women that I know are like, I am 122 days pregnant right. because of the fact that they are like, get this thing out of me. Sure. <laughs> you know, and the get this thing out of me starts in the first trimester with morning sickness and, you know, back aches or whatever, your feet growing, like all that stuff that happens in each trimester. So it is interesting because I was wondering at what point would she have been showing? And a lot of women aren't showing in that first trimester, but there, a pop happens in the second, as I'm sure you experienced with your beautiful woman, lady, wife, lady, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's what I call her at home. Woman, lady, wife, woman, lady, ma'am. But but that <laughs> said, one of the things that that I found because we we went and shot pause during during the time yeah. that Nikki was pregnant, I left when she was not showing and then yeah. went and shot in New York for a month and a half. And by the time I got back, she fully had like a big ass baby in there. And so yeah, there yeah. is a, a sort of weird window where a baby starts to basically just grow exponentially. But before mm -hmm. then, they're just kind of like a little seed of a human being. Yeah. And so in that way, four months is not necessarily indicative of being able to to show that you are pregnant right. always. And so to Absolutely. your point, maybe that's a there's a possibility that by that point she was pregnant, but she had to add a little extra to that bad boy to make it to make it show, to make it, it to work. make it show. Yeah, sometimes that happens. And it's so funny because like the women that I have known and I actually was pregnant. Around the end of the second, the third, the first trimester is when, you know, the pants, you have trouble buttoning the pants. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that would be, you know, and then, then the pop will happen a couple months later. But I definitely got to the point where I couldn't button the pants as well. Right. So, you know, it is interesting. And that timeline is so interesting. Also, you know, Blue Ivy could have come a couple of months early. Mm. 
I mean, a couple of weeks. That was about to say. <laughs> a couple of months. That's that's rough. Although in studying this shit, uh, technically, I think babies can be born as early as 25 weeks in, which is 15 weeks yes. early and still survive. It is challenging. They are more than yes. likely going to have issues sort of in their development yes. because the lungs are the last thing to develop. It it makes things complicated for the baby, but it is possible to survive uh, months ahead of your quote unquote due date. Yeah, my little cousin was 13 weeks early and she was a pound and nine ounces and had to Shit. stay. Yeah, she was so tiny and her mom couldn't even touch her for the first, I think, two months she was in the hospital. So I definitely know that as well. Fuck. Well, my baby is uh, it is too big. <laughs> my baby's too big. So, you know, let's find a balance here, kids. Let's all, let's right, all right. just agree to come out. Uh, the the regular size that makes every parent comfortable and uh, feel comfortable sleeping at night. So here's where <laughs> this countdown video and VMA video timeline gets even more complicated because she is clearly showing in the countdown video, right? She's We yeah. can see her pregnant belly, but then she also shot the video for Party, the song featuring J. Cole, although the Andre 3000 song is better. She shot that same video earlier in that month and that video she is not showing. So within that month, theoretically, either Whoa. Beyonce came to be showing in, in a few weeks post-party, pre-VMA, and then somehow maintained it through Countdown and got a month more pregnant or some some math is not mathing in this situation. Dude, Internet sleuths are the fucking best, man. They <laughs> will. I will put them on any case. If I need something solved, get the internet sleuths on it. That is amazing. Yeah, it's, yeah, it gets even more weird because similarly, she went on vacation to Croatia the week after the VMAs. There was this this picture, this sort of now somewhat infamous picture of her and Jay-Z in Croatia where she's wearing a bikini. And she is, she's got a little more belly than we're used to for Beyonce, but it's not the same type of showing that we saw on the VMA stage. And this is after wow. the VMA. So the, again, there's a complicated math happening here where a lady still kind of has abs and also it's poking out and it's like, bitch, that that just might be a little <laughs> too much tzatziki sauce. That's not necessarily a baby. Also, I have practiced it before and I think most girls have. You can push your stomach out to make yourself look a sure. level of pregnant. We've all done it before, having Absolutely. our little fantasies in the mirror as children. So you can make yourself look a level of pregnant. And she was showing in the VMAs. Mm -hmm. Could have been a little push out. And, and fellas, you can do it too. Believe in you yourselves. Poke those bellies out. We're, we're starting a challenge. <laughs> it's the little Nas X challenge. The little Nas X challenge. What am I going to tell my kids? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I Just let the gay boy live. I don't, How about that? <laughs> <laughs> He's gay, child. All right. <laughs> so here's here's where things get even more fascinating because yes. all of this math is is sort of like complicated. But and, you know, for a while, everybody is accusing Beyonce of faking it, blah, 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 blah. But the day that Beyonce went to well, let me not skip ahead because I think some of this is actually better in the order that I have it. I was trying to stay chronological, but we're going to do a little bit of a time skip here because most people, one of the, the sort of grounding arguments that a lot of people make with Beyonce not actually delivering the child that she claimed to have delivered is the fact that we've never seen Beyonce in any version of pregnancy that wasn't three to six months type pregnant in that those earlier stages of pregnancy. We're not even really seeing a full baby bump with the blue ivy of it all. It was more just sort of like the soft bump, the, the belly pokes, all the things that you're referring to. 
And so years and years went by, everybody saying she never had this baby. And then in 2013, two years after all of these accusations started, Beyonce released an HBO documentary, maybe you remember it, Life is But a Dream where she finally showed a number of pregnancy photos. But again, those pregnancy photos she showed were all very early stage pregnancy and could have easily been gas from too much tzatziki sauce. <laughs> Do you have issues with tzatziki sauce? Oh, like, no, they're, they're our sponsor. We're <laughs> sponsored by tzatziki. Get that white cream in your food and, and enjoy. Uh, they wrote oh, it. I'm just reading the, the, the stuff they wrote. That's one of those words I never really know how to say. <laughs> Taziki. <laughs> Kawanga Boulevard? Kapwanga? <laughs> yeah. Um, th- I mean, you are just making it even more interesting now. I didn't even know all of these timelines. Yes. So it, it seems to me that this life is but a dream and sort of this reveal of these pregnancy photos was was in part driven by a want for Beyonce to correct these sort of rumors that had been floating around out in the universe, right? And she even went as far to address, which is a rare thing for Beyonce. She she never d- addresses her rumors directly in most cases. But in the case of this pregnancy thing, she even went out of her way to say that she thought that these rumors were were crazy and that what would drive, she respects pregnant women too much to sort of like uh, make light of the the work that they do and sort of like the the beauty of the the experience. So she went and and said some shit about this which is not the way Beyoncé behaves. Wow, she's like, "Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me." Who's pregnant, goddamn it? <laughs> he said, "I didn't fuck that bitch. I'll kill you." <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, also thou dost protest too much, Brute. We're doing a lot here. Once again, like I said, if she's going to do something, she's going to have a team. There's going to be, you know, yeah. a documentary. There's going to be a dramatic reading, poetry, music underneath the words. Yeah. Crying photos. She does it. She's the best. <laughs> and so, and that's where where I think the Beyonce of it all gets so complicated, right? Is that like, there is an argument to be made that maybe she just saved these photos because to your point, she's a she's a woman of of gravitas, right? She yes. enjoys the entire spectacle of it. So she wants these photos to be special. She wants to keep her privacy. There's a lot of arguments to be made, but on the ground floor, we're asking to see these pictures. You ain't showing it to us. And then two years later, the best you can come up with is your belly button poking out a little bit. And that ain't quite enough to justify the weight. I mean, we could all Photoshop a picture. Hello? Mm. Like, we know some talented Photoshoppers. That I, I know teenagers that can Photoshop a picture sure. to make you look <laughs> pregnant. So, um, sure. Okay. Uh, if that's your ministry. <laughs> Let's get even messier with this whole thing. Yes. All right. Ooh, Here's where it gets even drinking. messier is that on the day of the baby's delivery, Beyonce and Jay-Z paid $1.3 million to secure and redecorate the entire fourth floor of the NICU wing of Manhattan's yep. Lenox Hill Hospital. Yep. They removed all doctors and staff yep. at a certain point yep. and even taped over security cameras. Moreover... Yes. At least one woman has come forward claiming to be Beyonce's surrogate. Wow. (laughs) I like how you said, and also the answer. Oh, well, (laughs) I don't know if this is the answer. Let me be clear. The main person who's come forward claiming to be Beyonce's surrogate, claiming to be the quote-unquote real carrier of Blue Ivy, also claimed to be the legal mother of Northwest, Prince George, and all three of Michael Jackson's kids. (laughs) You better <laughs> listen. If you are going to have a full psychotic episode, sure. make let it go deep. I like a delusion of grandeur. That's amazing because I think Jay-Z and Beyonce are good business people. Mm-hmm. And they're going to pay the people to keep the secrets. Yeah. I've heard she doesn't pay her dancers. However, <laughs> you're gonna pay. You're gonna pay the people you want to keep the secrets. The dancers are. You're doing them a favor, apparently. There ain't but no secrets in dance. We you do it all a, up yeah. in front. 
please. And so, uh, yeah, I believe they would pay those people very well to sign a simple non-disclosure agreement. Sure. And and what's fascinating, again, is being is removing the entire staff from this area when, you know, it's an entire floor. There's no possibility that it's not like this is a rotating door. These doctors easily could have just been blocked from the area, but they were like, nah, we can't risk the possibility that anybody can be seen coming in or out, which means yeah. that they had something a little bigger to hide. And maybe the bigger thing was just, we don't want people to know what our baby looks like. But having seen enough newborns, them motherfuckers ain't distinguishable. You don't see a newborn. Nah. They could have stole my baby at the hospital. I wouldn't have known the difference. <laughs> I'd have been like, yes, oh, the look. whole one of my favorite movies, Big Business from the 80s, is about people not knowing what newborns look like. No. You can get switched at birth. <laughs> they're all just fat and, and tired. They're, they're not doing nothing. Here's my favorite part of the the woman who who claims to be all of these people's mother. My favorite part, her name is Tina Seals. And one of the things that Tina Seals says specifically in relation to the Kanye West of it all, remember, she claims to be the mother of Northwest. She went out to say that she was willing to forgo any financial settlement with Kanye West if he agreed to a record deal for her 22 year old son. Look, (laughs) you got to put cards on the table. Yeah. (laughs) I want you to want something. If you are coming out with these statements, I want you to want something. I don't want it to just be like, hey, I just wanted to let everyone know. No, Kanye, I would like money and a deal. That's a great point. And that was my issue with that lady who said Usher gave her herpes. Was like, what's your goal here, bitch? I'm I'm cool with you coming forward and accusing Usher of giving you herpes. I believe Usher has herpes. But what's the goal? What are we doing? doing here like what where where do you benefit from this now we just all think you got herpes exactly exactly and that's where like a lot of the women you know come out and say things have happened to them in the me too movement people will be like oh but they did it to get to get what? Yeah. To get what? <laughs> like, I want to know what these people have gotten. Yeah. What a, that has been so great. Who's giving out all these <laughs> sweet rape high fives? You know what I mean? Like, yes. this, these are horrible experiences they're describing. And you guys are being <laughs> like, yeah, but they're going to sit front row at the Lakers game. This is fucked right. up. It's like, no, there's no yes. benefits here, dog. No benefits. No benefits. I can't even get a. That's why I'm like, okay, if you sleep with a dude and you get a television show. Like you talk about the casting couch. I might be interested in the casting couch if a contract is next to the couch. Yeah. <laughs> I have had sex for way less. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we signed in this contract. I'm not just having sex with you with the hopes no. that one day you'll give me an audition. I got to get casted first. Then I'll suck that dick. You know? There we go. <laughs> there we go. So there are three things that I think we we would be remiss not to cover before we go to break. Because we've talked about some of the more messy details of the entire pregnancy, but what is the motive? We're talking about motive now in terms of all of this stuff. And the question is, what would be Beyonce's motive for sort of either uh, faking this pregnancy or changing the the circumstances of of her baby's birth? And so I, I've collected a few different motives that I would love to unpack with you now. Um, There are some people who claim that part of the motive that happened here, and this sounds similar to the one that you described, is that Beyonce may have faced fertility issues, right? Mm -hmm. That she she struggled with fertility. She wasn't able to keep the baby the way that she planned and subsequently returned to a surrogate. That then also might explain why. In her second pregnancy, Beyonce and Jay-Z have twins, which twins often are the result of medical intervention to help with women who are struggling with pregnancy to. And basically, once you start adding all kinds of medications, chemicals, shit into people's bodies, the body overproduces and sometimes produces twins. That said, Twins do not seem, based on the research that I've done, to run in either Beyonce or Jay-Z's family, which suggests these twins either came out of nowhere and God blessed y'all or medical intervention led to the birth of these two children. 
Yeah. And and fraternal twins are an example of that because identical twins are, quote unquote, accidents. Fraternal twins are usually hereditary in families. And when you are going to get IVF or some type of uh, assistance getting pregnant, they're going to put multiple eggs into the situation to see how many are viable. And that's why somebody might have two, three, Lord, four, five. (laughs) Yeah. Praise be to Octo Mom. She kept all them babies. A perfectly healthy lady who uh, who had, we we should have never questioned and definitely deserved a television show. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and some money. I hope she still has some, but I doubt it. Yeah. So yeah, that that is an example with the twins. But I do think she was pregnant with the twins. Right. And I I think based on that suggestion, it probably was the result of fertility support from a a medical team more than it was just a natural uh, sort of like conception of twins from she and Jay-Z's old penis. Very old penis. (laughs) Very old penis. But the penis don't matter. It's it's sadly the eggs that matter. But the funny, yeah, I know, right? Depends on who you talk to. But also my mother, who is a nurse, labor and delivery nurse my whole entire life, she had a theory that the twins had to have been in the NICU because of the fact that she did not show pictures of them or any type of anything for a long time. Mm. So my mother was just like, huh, I think those babies might be in the NICU. <laughs> she just said it as a throwaway Whoa. and just went about her business. I, now, I'll say this. So. As as a recent father, my baby did not come out uh, attractive. She came out very ugly and and quickly became cute. But yes. I was more than willing to keep my child's photos private <laughs> as soon as she came. I was like, oh, we just ain't going to show people, but we'll tell them no. she's happy and healthy because no. they can't look at this. This is this is a train wreck. <laughs> I hate when people do close ups of newborns. No. no, a newborn is being held from a distance. Yeah, we are getting an up angle. Maybe just see a little bit of that landscape. No. That's how you shoot a newborn <laughs> from a just a <laughs> like a panorama, like a Bob <laughs> Ross painting. You know, yes. <laughs> no close ups on newborn. Stop that. So here's where the theories get increasingly more insane. So we started at the most simple one: fertility issues. Yeah, but then there are some who say Jay Z cheated on Beyonce, and Beyonce opted to raise the illegitimate child from Jay Z's stepping out. That this, this in fact could oh. be the child of the good hair Becky that we've heard so much about. Oh, like Suri. And Tom Cruise mm. and Katie Holmes. Exactly. Ooh. That's right. Okay. So that's an interesting one. That that one is pretty far on that because of the fact that Blue Ivy looks just like baby Beyonce. Yes. Well, but she spent years looking just like Jay-Z and has just sort of, she's come into Beyonce her own in a pretty way. Beyonce looked like yeah. Jay-Z yeah. as a baby. <laughs> I was shocked because I thought Blue Ivy just looked like Jay-Z. Then I saw pictures of Beyonce and I was like, oh my God, she looks just like Beyonce. And apparently Beyonce looks like Jay-Z. Yeah, they they had a they there's a Venn diagram of when they all looked alike, I guess, and now they look different, but but for a while they were they were streaming together. So here's my personal favorite of these yes. potential conspiracy theories. And then we'll we'll go to our final break. But the last one, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. There are some who claim that Beyonce and Jay-Z are in fact raising the illegitimate child of Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, that when he was stepping out on Tina, Miss Tina, if you're nasty, ah. then that he had a baby and was willing to to basically walk away from that child because Matthew Knowles apparently is a piece of shit. And Beyonce said, no, Papa, I'll raise the child. And Jay-Z and Beyonce have been raising that child ever since. That is just like the Janet Jackson mm-hmm. and Reby baby, right? Yes. That is some hilarious. Whoever came up with that theory, kudos <laughs> to you. I am sure you are alone in your mother's basement. But Absolutely. here's the thing. You better work that brain because that is some juicy, hot 
hot tea. I wish I had a tea with some bourbon in it for that. These one. are not That's the fun. These are not the conspiracy <laughs> theories of people who are uh, who are loved and cared for. These no. are the conspiracy theories of the lonely, but they are still fun all the same. Absolutely. Like this person's locked in the basement by their mother. They can only come out <laughs> when the mother chooses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it got real I'm sloth like, from the Goonie vibes for this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm very much like, oh, she wasn't pregnant. I didn't even think of who the babies was. That is old, hot, old Maddie spicy. Knowles out here uh, running game and, and ditching babies, apparently. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I mean, I wouldn't put that past him at all. Sure. But I see, here's where I think it, it's a little short sighted is. Matthew Knowles may not be the the hero that he wanted us to believe he was for the years that he represented Beyonce and Destiny's Child as his as their manager, but Matthew Knowles has shot a hundred percent up to this point of successful fucking superstars. Beyonce and mm-hmm. Solange are both legendary performers, talents out in the world. Yes, he would be a fool. To get a third baby and be like, I ain't fucking with this one, though. Like, you literally have another shot at making a great. Just see how it goes, Matthew. You say you got that Joe Jackson's part? You got that Joe Jackson. (laughs) (laughs) He got that Joe Jackson. You better make them babies. You got to keep making them if you got that Joe Jackson. Yeah, I mean, I believe it. You want to you sprinkle them in somebody else? See what, see what we can do over here? See what we can do over here. <laughs> That's great. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with more Joy L. Johnson, more My Mama Told Me. And we are back. Yeah, we're back here with more Joyelle Johnson. (laughs) More my mama told me. We're still talking about the legendary Beyonce and her legendary lies about that goddamn baby. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I've lost a pound from laughing. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let's let's play a game. We love to play a game on this show. It's it's our favorite thing, and I have a classic game that I would love to play with you. It's a game called Homemade Hotep. Hotep. Homemade Hotep. So, Joyelle, the way that this game oh. works is I am going to introduce to you a very real fact out in the world, something that is objectively treated as a truth. And what I would love for you to do is just hotep the shit out of it. Add as much conspiracy and, and frankly, uh, homophobia as you feel necessary. <laughs> Mostly homophobia. <laughs> to, to make this real fact a little less real. Does that make sense? Yes. Great. So this is a fun one that I found. It's apparently, and and I think there's there's got some ripe material here for you. Apparently in Scotland, the national animal of Scotland is the unicorn. Out in Scotland, their national animal is the unicorn. Everywhere else, America, we got real animals, bald eagles and, and I don't know, goats. I don't know what America's into. But the point is... Scotland's claiming their national animal is a unicorn. Tell me why. I mean, it makes sense uh, because Scotland is where the Caucasus Mountains <laughs> were up there and they didn't get enough sunlight. Uh-huh. And that's what turned their skin white and their eyes blue. <laughs> and which is why they would not be able to recognize a real animal <laughs> because their skin is translucent and so is their brains. So, of course, they're going to choose something like a unicorn because I know what they was doing up there in the Caucasus Mountains. The men's was sleeping with the men's, Mm. the women's, you know, they wasn't even having enough babies correctly. And 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 this is this is the problem that you have. Everyone needs sunlight. Unicorns don't have no sunlight. They're white. Mm. They're white with a rainbow. Oh, I bet you they don't have a gender either. Mm. My goodness. What, what letters do we have that have to follow a unicorn in Scotland? Because they don't pronounce all their letters in Scotland. I'm just against it. You know? <laughs> this is a rainbow flag wrapped in a unicorn with some glitter. 
Ah, I bet you they have plenty of parades. This is stressing me. I out. love this. <laughs> wow, you did it. Hold on. He gets the rebound, passes it to the man, shoots it, and boom goes the dynamite. Boom goes the dynamite. That was fantastic. What what a response. <sighs> I normally play Funk Flex uh, going, that's, that's motherfucking bars, nigga. You know nothing about that. But I couldn't find my drop, so I played one that's very different from Funk Flex. But the point is, <sighs> you still nailed that. I love that. That they're, they're so white that they can't even see reality as we understand it in other places exactly. in the world. You need sun. You need sunlight. And then you, if you get too much sunlight, you get people in Los Angeles oh, who don't sure. know how to act. <laughs> so you need a balance. <laughs> you need a balance. Yep. That's why I'm an East Coast girl. I think in L.A. we see everything and uh, we don't have souls to be able to communicate one way or the other whether these things we're seeing are right or wrong. Yes. No one knows. Man, you need oh, a balance. Man. Half sunlight, half well, not. <laughs> well, Joyelle, we did it. This was this was a we pleasure. This you 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 nailed this episode. Could you tell the people at home where they can find you and what cool stuff you have going on? Yes, I mean after the beehive is done with me, hopefully I will still be available on <laughs> Yell Joy. Yell Joy is across all platforms. That's my album that came out this Juneteenth. And Lovejoy is my special on Peacock. Hell yeah. So, yeah. so go go watch the special. Go listen to the album. Go follow Joyelle wherever the, the, the following happens. And uh, yes. as always, you can follow me at Langston Kerman on all the platforms. And, and uh, if you are in Los Angeles on December 15th, I would love to see you over at uh, Hotel Cafe. We're hosting another monthly show. It'll be a good ass time. A lot of fun comedians, Langston Kerman and freaks. It's it's a good it's a good silly time. And please like and subscribe to the podcast, review it, do all the things that that you, the listener at home, are responsible for doing. I'll kill you if you don't. I swear to God, (laughs) I'll kill you and your family if you don't review my podcast. Okay, I said it. Bye, bitch.